Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Now, this is an important condition which although occurs rarely in our clinical practices, however, this condition is important to recognize because the underlying pathology should be identified which actually most of the cases leads to acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. So, in this video, we'll talk about everything that you need to know about ANUG, which is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. So let's get started. Now, the most frequently term used is ANUG. However, there are certain synonyms which are associated, which ANUG is also called as. For example, the other commonly used term includes French mouth, then we have furospinal tubule, gingivitis. You know, these are the terms, for example, necrotizing gingivitis. And at times, Vincent's gingivitis, Vincent and Jan is also terms which are used to describe ANUC. So, if you encounter these terms, you should know that they mean ANUC. Now, acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, ANUC, is basically a polymicrobial infection of the gums. Now, what do we mean by polymicrobial? Polymicrobial means that there is a wide spectrum of bacteria which is involved in actually causing this disease which affects the gums or gingiva of the patient now. The typical incidence of the patient who suffer from ANUG is between 15 to 35. However, cases can occur before this age or even after this age now. There are certain important systematic conditions which should be recognized because these are the conditions which actually predisposes a patient to suffer from ANUG now. These conditions include certain immunodeficiency disorders, people who live a very stressful life, for example, they take lots of stress, patients who suffer from anxiety, depression, and those patients who are severely malnourished. So, you can say 90% of the cases involve patients who are suffering from any of these conditions. So, it is very important to identify ANUG and then actually identify the underlying cause. Now, recently there has been a surge in the cases of ANUG because the consumption of various drugs and substance abuse is occurring. So, that is one of the reasons as to why ANUG is actually increasing in incidence in the past few years. So this is an important thing that you should know and you should actually take history of the patient so that you can identify certain drugs which actually may lead to patient suffering from ANAC. Now moving on towards the etiology as to what actually causes ANAC now. As we talked before, different bacteria are involved in causing ANAC and the underlying systematic condition actually leads to eventually causing ANUG. So there are various bacteria which are involved in actually causing this infection of the gums. Other than that, sometimes even different viruses are also involved along with the bacteria which can cause ANUG. Now, these bacteria and viruses, they release different poisons or you can say toxins and these toxins basically irritate the gums and then it eventually leads to the infection. Now, if you do not treat ANUG at proper time and you manage it properly, this infection can lead to ulcers and those ulcers actually may destroy the underlying tissue for example gingiva, the periodontal ligament, alveolar bone and if left untreated it can eventually lead to tooth loss. So it is very important to identify the etiology and then manage the patient accordingly. Now talking about the microbiology since this is a polymicrobial infection the most commonly identified bacteria which actually causes ANUG are basically bacteroids, fusobacterium, as well as spirochetes. Therefore, it's also called as fusospirochetal gingivitis or necrotizing gingivitis as well. So, these are certain bacteria which are involved in actually causing ANUG. So, you should actually identify knowing that fusobacterium, spirochetes, treponema, morella, bacteroids. So, these are the most common bacteria which may predispose a patient to suffer from ANUG. Now, let's talk about certain predisposing factors which actually increases the risk of the patient to develop ANUG. Now, firstly, patients who have poor oral hygiene. So, in those cases, there is already an increased load of bacteria which is already present in the oral cavity, so which basically increases the chance of suffering from ANUG. Other than that, as we have talked before, patients who have poor diet and nutrition, they basically suffer from malnourishment. So, Malnourished individuals are at increased risk of developing ANUG. Other than that, ANUG is also associated with people who smoke and chew tobacco as well. Certain times, lifestyle 
patients have a sedentary lifestyle, they do not have a healthy lifestyle, so that also predisposes the patient to suffer from this infection and other infections as well. As I've talked before, sometimes patients have a really stressful life, emotionally they are very weak or you can say they have lots of anxiety and depression. So those individuals are also at increased risk of developing ANUG. Other than that, sometimes patients who have compromised immune system, they also can suffer from ANUG. And lastly, sometimes, although rarely, some throat infection, mouth infection of any kind can also increase the risk of patient to develop ANUG. So these are certain predisposing factors associated with the patient that you should know and also ask the patient when you're taking history of the patient because it actually helps you to identify the disease. Now moving on towards signs and symptoms of patients who are actually suffering from ANUG. As you can see in this clinical picture, you can appreciate that gingiva is swollen and you can see there is reddish appearance over here. Also you can see roots are exposed and you can see this grayish lesion which is present looks like an ulcer. So you can appreciate that there is some deformity which is present here. So this is the characteristic lesion of ANUG. So let's talk about this different signs and symptoms. Firstly, you can appreciate that there is this ulceration of the gums which is present over here. These are painful lesions and the characteristic sign of ANUG. Other than that, you can also appreciate the swellings which are associated over here. These are swellings which are important to note now. The ulcerative tissue which you can see over here, basically this ulcerative tissue is an ulcer. So when you place any instrument, dental instrument, so this will wear off because it's a dead tissue. Next, you should note that there is this gum bleeding which is also present over here, which is the red red lesion you can appreciate. Other than that, you can also appreciate this grayish lesion, grayish you can say membrane or film which is present along the ulcer. This is basically the crater like lesion which you should remember thoroughly because this, this lesion you can see a depression like lesion. This is basically crater like ulcer and this is the most characteristic sign of ANAC and you should always remember that. Other than that, sometimes patients experience metallic or if you can say foul taste in their mouth and sometimes patients experience, but you can say most of the times patients experience bad breath which is called as halidosis because of the ulcer then the things that are present due to this condition. So other than that, certain systematic conditions can also occur, which is fever. Patient can develop fever when they suffer from anus. And sometimes lymph nodes around head, neck and jaw, they can also be swollen. So these are certain signs and symptoms that you should remember and that actually helps you to diagnose anus. Now, this is another clinical picture where you can appreciate that there is this crater-like lesion. So as I've talked before, this crater-like lesion is the most significant sign of ANAC and you can also appreciate similarly swollen gingiva, reddish gingiva, you can see gingival bleeding as well. So this gives you an idea that the patient might be suffering from ANAC. In this second clinical picture, you can also appreciate that there is gingival enlargement, gingival swelling and you can see bleeding and you can appreciate these crater-like lesions. So these crater-like lesions are the most characteristic sign of ANAC as you are seeing in different clinical picture how they always almost always appear in patient who are suffering from ANUG. Similarly in this another clinical picture you can appreciate that these are crater like lesion which are present. The roots of the teeth they are exposed but this crater like lesion is present so and similarly gingiva is swollen it's reddish in color it is enlarged and you can see the oral hygiene of the patient that is quite poor. So you can see this crater like lesion which is the most characteristic sign of ANUG. And lastly, in this clinical picture, you can appreciate the similar ANUG feature, which is crater like ulcers, which is the most characteristic sign of ANUG, which you should always now remember. Now, lastly, talking about the treatment of patients who are actually suffering from ANUG because treatment is required and is of utmost importance because if you do not treat this lesion timely, it can lead to loss of the dose. So, the primary target of Treating such patient is to reduce the bacterial count because the bacteria is actually responsible for, for causing ANUG. So you have to reduce the bacterial count. Now, how do we reduce that? Basically, we have to clean the oral cavity if you put it simply. So how do we do that? Firstly, you can instruct the patient to do salt water or hydrogen peroxide based rinses because this actually helps you to reduce the bacterial count. Other than that, you can also introduce chlorhexidine metronidazole can also be introduced which actually helps to reduce the bacterial count. Now, 
Then we prescribe antibiotics to the patient. For example, you can prescribe patient penicillin, which is indicated around 250 mg every 6 to 8 hours. So that actually helping to reduce the bacterial count. So you can see our main target is to reduce the bacterial count because since this is a bacterial infection, it's a polymicrobial infection. So you have to make sure that the bacterial count is reduced so that eventually making sure that the disease is gone. Other than that, you instruct the patient to regularly do salt water rinses because it helps to irrigate the mouth and further decrease the bacterial count. And lastly, we instruct the patient that a regular visit to the doctor is required so that the condition can be monitored and if there is any change in medicines or any regime that is required that can be instructed to the patient and also see whether the patient is complying to the prescribed treatment plan or not. So in this video we talked about everything that you need to know about ANF starting with what are different synonyms we talked about what actually is ANF then we talked about its etiology different signs and symptoms then we saw different clinical cases just to appreciate how actually ANUG looks like and then lastly we talked about what is the treatment plan to treat such patients so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time